Hi and welcome to Brad 3D. I'm here to show you what I think is my personally most favorite feature of using 3D mode here in X-Lights. And I think it's actually the feature that I think people use the least and it's come up several times in the uh, X-Lights Zoom help channel. Like what is this feature about? So I'm gonna give you a quick overview today of how to use the viewpoints and what they're for. And if you're doing 3D, how great they are but also, even if you're 2D, a reason you might want to flip into 3D mode and move your models into some depth. So the first thing is, is you go over to your layout tab and you have your whole setup here. So this is my whole light show. And what you're going to want to do is go to save your current viewpoint. But you're going to pick a good viewpoint to use first. In my case, these are all the ones I use. I have top, which is looking straight down. I have three quarter. Uh, top front, which is this is the one I actually use the most. What this allows us to do is change the buffer. So normally the buffer for rendering is just this very flat, straight on 2D view. By using views like top and side, as well as three quarter angles, we can actually map much nicer to things that go in depth. So things that go straight back, um, these are roof lines that go at interesting angles. It allows us to get props that are at you know, very three dimensional angles, not have things just streak back along these points. So if you're following this at home, the two I'd recommend doing very easily is go and look straight down like you're a drone looking down at everything. And then you right click and go to save current viewpoint. I'm gonna call this YouTube dot top this is for YouTube video and I'm going to go and do another one over here and go create viewpoint or save viewpoint again go YouTube dot north high there we go so now we have those two new viewpoints that we can use in things and we'll use those sequences so if we go back over to our sequencer now Normally, if you were to use the circles effect, and so normally it's on default, these are your normal settings, and you look at your show, anything you have that's three-dimensional, when the circles come in, they just project straight through it, like someone standing infinitely far away over on this side of the street, shooting a, like a laser at your place. Well, that doesn't always look the best in your show. What's great, though, is that if you go to your render style right here, change it to per preview, and then camera where it says 2D, change that to one of the ones you just made. In this case, I'm gonna set it to the north high that I just made. And what you see now is now it's like you've got like, you know, the spotlights being shown down from a helicopter that's at this viewpoint. And in fact, if you right click and go load viewpoint in north high, I'm sorry, it's from this angle here. So it's as if there is a spotlight being shown from right here. So you can see how these circles actually look back like circles again, because this is the angle that we're projecting them from. So we can go here to layout and we'll do one more because I like this angle a lot. Go save current viewpoint, YouTube three fourths high. Go back to our sequencer, back to here. Let's change this to, oh, if it's missing, just click off the effect and back and then they pop repopulate the list. So now we go load viewpoint three fourths high. This is just to see it, what you can see here. We'll make that big for a sec here. So now you can see the circles. If you're at ground level looking at things, it actually looks like spotlights are moving across things in 3D space instead of just streaking back across stuff. So that works for a lot of effects. This gets very useful. So for example, if we look at good old fashioned bars, classic effect, by default, it's in 2D mode and the bars are just moving straight up. Our direction is set to up, they're going up here, which means any things that we have that are back straight back all get the exact same pixel at the same time, like these matrices. Well, if we change it to per preview and we change it to, to our top one we just made, YouTube top, what's happening now is our gradient is actually going front to back, which is a very different effect and one that you can't create easily in this normal 2D view. In fact, if we slow that down and we make that gradient, and if we change from up to down, 
now you have lights that are coming from the back of your show all the way forward. So you can set that up nicely so that you have things like a uh, flash of white that, that comes flying forward. But as you can see, there's a very different gradient experience, one powered by the 3D views. If we change this to North High, now we have this beautiful gradient on a diagonal across all of our complex eaves that just has this beautiful fade across everything. And if we do three quarter high, now we have my favorite replacement. So I use three quarter high instead of the 2D view for almost everything. Because if we just set this back to 2D, to default, here's what we have looking straight ahead. And that's okay, but it really doesn't allow you to have any separation of models. So if you've got models in front of models where you've got, you know, what I would call layering going on, it doesn't allow for much separation in color. But if we go to per preview, switch this again to our three quarter high, it's a very similar effect, but it allows for that color separation and depth that I think really helps set things apart. All right, so moving on here, I can show you a couple other views and things I've got here in my sequencer, just as a sort of test effects to show you. Again, uh, this is the three quarter from the dots. Um, uh, Butterfly is a great one to actually see the effect as well. So by default, if you look down at your model preview, you can see it's just you know rendering in 2D across all these things, no separation. Per preview, three quarter high. Hey, look at that. Our 3D model now feels 3D. Also, one great thing about viewpoints is you can pick these viewpoints from here, load viewpoint, and then go to export your videos. So if you want to export a video of your show, it's a great way to just save your camera angles that you want to be able to use later so that this gets your nice video of your show. But you can see how it's still the butterfly effect, but you know, front to back, you get a lot more variation. Really helps things set off on the show. All right. This is bars doing the, the same thing from top, like I talked about before. But now we're gonna talk about how you can use these things for more complex effects. Even things like doing piece stakes that are spread across the yard, this can be a great way to really simplify programming those. So I've got a basic two layer effect set up here. So my first bottom layer is just um, butterfly projecting from the top. So we're, we're looking down this way and doing the butterfly effect across the pixels this way. So you'll see that things that are verticals get very much the, the same color most of the time, but there's a little angle to it. And then I've got the wave effect. The wave effect with per preview is fantastic because it really lets you tune where the wave is coming from. So in this case, we've got a three-dimensional color field coming from our top, and then we have a wave effect being projected from our three-quarter view. So when we actually look at this from the ground level, we actually get these great different separations on the waves. And if you apply both of these things at the same time to things like P-stakes, where you have like a grid of three-dimensional lights, that's where you can really see the, the popping and being able to create some of those similar effects. But if I were to change my wave here, to top. Now you can see the wave is very clearly down that way. So when we look at the street level, it gives a completely different effect. If we change it to north high, now our wave is being projected that way. And again, a very different look to the effect just by changing these perspectives. And I can show you some of my other ones like my south sides. And they allow you to really mix up what effects look like without having to change too much and create really interesting effects by also intersecting waves, things like that. All right, last one I'm going to show you here is how to make a waving American flag across your whole show. So in this case, I'm using a fairly standard image effect. It's just a picture of the American flag. But instead of trying to map it straight on, I'm mapping it actually down across the whole show. And I do that, in this case, I'm actually mapping at three quarters by using the three quarter view. So let's do three quarter high here. And we have scale to fit on. So that projects the American flag across my show this way. And then I'm using the wave effect with one is unmasked. So I'm unmasking that layer below me to basically reveal the effect as it goes through. And we can go in here. We can slow our wave down a little bit. 
You even make it very, very thin if you want to do more waves. Or make it very thick. But you get this effect of the, the flag waving in the breeze as it goes and cuts through it on an opposite axis. And right now, the wave is currently set for just 2D. But if we go per preview, and we pick our top view, now the wave is being cut through the top and revealing, if we do it from our north high, from over here, we get a very different look. So tons and tons of stuff to play with here. It's a feature I don't really see people using as much in their sequencing that I really feel like they would benefit from. It's, it's one of the most handy things in 3D is the ability to go over here to layout, pick a very specific thing that you want to set up where you want an image to come from, a projection, a wave, a plasma, aim your camera at it, save this viewpoint, and then go back into your sequencer and then set up and say, okay, I want you to, to render the models from that perspective. So hopefully you found this helpful. Give me a like and subscribe. Leave a comment if there's something else in x you want to learn about in 3D mode and have fun sequencing.